so sweet and so nice. Hi guys, welcome to Rollo's Music Lab. Look what fell inside in this little can. I just threw those away in the trash can and it dropped inside the little can just by pure luck. And I thought, hey, that sounds interesting. What could I do with this thing here? What could I do? Cool, right? You can do percussion with those little cans and just throw some things inside that rattle like little caps. So anyway, I was thinking, right, I should keep this little can because of another project. So besides percussion, what else can you do with these things, with these cans? I'll give you a little hint. You take a can, you need at least one string. Yeah, originally you just take one string, a piece of wood, and then you just crickle it all together. And we will see that in one of the later episodes. So I keep this little can. It's so, yeah, it's tiny. I think I will start with this one. So, see you soon. So, moving on. I hope you're doing well. Um, last time, you remember the balcony video where I showed you how to, uh, found a little pick, where I showed you how to uh, stain your guitar neck with a really easy method. Setting it with coffee, so now it's really yeah, it's all dried, dried up, and uh, as you can see, I would guess it's like one or two tones darker, one to two tones darker with the coffee method, and it looks nice. So I leave it like this. I will probably oh, just quiet before I do anything else. So this is my little work table layout, simple, but it will do for now. I don't need much space. Let's put those little mats here. Did you know that those are yoga mats for like cats? Probably yoga mats for cats, for little hamsters. And I just need those here as well stretch the table and also not stretch the guitar box and stuff. Easy and works well. All right, now empty the box. Get this stuff here. Um, right, so <coughs> about the box, I think because of the looks of it, I think I will, right, this, at the moment only this thing is stained. And I might put some uh, some clear coat, some clear uh, varnish onto the, the neck later on, but at the moment I just leave it like this. What I want to do today is install the tuners because there's not much more to do here, right? The little blocks are inside, the neck fits. So as I told you as well last time, um, all right, before I forget, very important. Just to let you know. Balcony episodes, I was thinking about this because of the noise outside. I mean, when there's only birds singing, that's not really annoying or disturbing, not, not at all. But I thought for the videos, um, for the building videos and playing videos, I, yeah, I, I might do that once in a while uh, on the balcony because it's just cool, it has good natural light and now it's nice weather is coming here. So, uh, Sunlight and it also feels nice outside to be able to do something whether it be sanding or just screwing some parts together or gluing some parts together This is really cool to yeah, so that you can also get some different scenery to see But I will not do it that often because of um, yeah, traffic uh, traffic uh, Cars and trucks and buses and also airplanes from time to time so it might be a little annoying so just so just to let you know I won't do that too often. Now for the tuners. Um, just to be on the safe side. I could, right now, I could just 
get my little box, get the little drill, and drill right in here, three holes. But since I have never done this before, and I don't know what will happen, maybe, yeah, well, if I make a mistake, then I might have ruined this in only a few, after only a few seconds. So, so if you if you do something you have not done before, if you try maybe a new tool or you, you find some special wood that you like to use for your, one of your builds, um, maybe always start off with a trial session, with a sacrificial piece. Uh, to test the tools to have, that you have, to test the accessories if you maybe want to connect something like this. Um, Alright, let's go. Okay, I decided for the black tuners, black tuning pegs, and maybe you remember from last time. So this outer, this large outer diameter is 10 millimeters, and therefore I need to drill the 10 millimeters, which is roughly 3 eighths of an inch. And now I will use this sacrificial piece. It has roughly the same thickness as my head stock. And we'll drill into the sacrificial piece. And see, and see if it, how it fits with the So this is it, uh, here I have a little shim, so the shim comes on here and then I have this little uh, bushing, this little piece. And it will just come on here like this. And I just hand tighten it Click. like this. Okay. Now this looks nice, yeah. Um, given that I have the bushing and this shim underneath, I, I mean, right now, this, this height here. Right, you can see the little hole for the string. This height here, once the string is in it, then it wraps underneath this hole towards the bottom two or three times around. This will be okay, but um, given that my headstock on the, on the neck for my guitar is thicker, I will end up with, uh, yeah, with even less, with maybe two millimeter less from this center pin. Um, in other words, it will not be enough. Um, I think I will have to, I will have to reduce the, the thickness of my headstock um, in order to put those little things in correctly. Okay, so I drilled two holes already. I already learned something. Uh -huh. Uh, but so far it's, yeah, it's good, looking good. Uh, so the last, last marker here is for the third string. Uh, what I already learned is don't drill from the bottom side, but directly drill from the top side, the good side, the beautiful side, because here the first hole I did was this one. And now look here what happened on this side, it chipped off a bit, because once the, yeah, once the drill pushes through with a little bit of force uh, you, when you're pushing with your hand and what happened was that it's uh, chipped off. Not that big of a deal because it will yeah it will be slightly only slightly visible but still because of the shim it will be put on top of this but still. So lesson learned. Um, 
drill from the side that looks good and once the like like this so from the top and once the the drill bit pushes through on the other side even if it chips off it's it's not that big of a deal all right so i just marked uh, the for the third tuner uh, i do it if i because of this uh, uh, headstock angle because of this scarf joint here i will put it like this to have a firm yeah good uh, support and then put the drill bit on Before also was like on the slightly give it another go so that little pieces here that they just be cut off on the edges. But you can also use your fingernails. I mean, it, yeah, use the fingernails gently Oops. and ta ta. show you how it looks like because now I put the tuners in this is how it looks so this is fine um, here you see how it chipped off oh man the other sides are okay but yeah because of the shim and the bushing i mean it will not really be visible the back side is anyway hidden because of the because of this casing here little housing uh anyways this you see this here it's uh nah, it's not enough so right now what I'm missing here, so this is like the first, the first winding. And then there will be maybe two underneath or three, so it will be too close. So what that means, I will take my force a bit. And here around this three holes, just with the force a bit, take off like um, three millimeters, I think. Okay, let's do it. I found that what what actually is the case on these tuners. So I put this little bushing. You see the thing that I cannot turn in here. Screw in. It stops here, like this uh, there. Minimum thickness of the headstock. If my headstock will be thinner than this, then I have a problem because then this will just wiggle around and be loose because I cannot. Uh, I cannot screw this little uh, bushing in anymore, any further. So I have to be careful not to not to cut to cut off um, more than that. I found the right size, thirty millimeters. With better tools, I would, of course, I would just zzz, zzz, take off two millimeters like this, and it would look much better than this. But hey, after all, it's a cigar box guitar, and you have to use what you have. And you have to make it work, right? Why not with this thing? Front? Yeah, okay. Looks, yeah, acceptable.
it ate half of this <laughs> half of the, all this wood oh man and from this side it looks cool huh it's like the contrast the back side yeah not so much so front Uh, yeah, that will do. You can imagine here the three strings coming up there. Okay, not too bad. Accessibility of the tuners, yeah, I'm not like... I have enough space. Now here is this, this, see the mess, the mess of this. So what I'll do next is, yeah, go for another two millimeters and then finish this off. Then the tuners are installed. Hey, good news, it finally fits. You know what I did in the end? I filed it down. Looks like an elephant rampaged over this. Oh man. So here you see the three rounds with the, what, what I first did with the Forstner bit. Um, And now it looks like this. So, lessons learned. This is a good example of the wrong approach. I mean, but it was fun and I learned a couple of things. Um, so, yeah, good tools are important, especially since I'm, I'm doing like 90% or 95% of the, the work I'm doing manually. So, manual tools, files. Um, and other tools. The only thing I'm using at the moment as, a, as an electrical yeah, tool or machine is the electric, uh, electric drill. But besides that, I mean, you can, yeah, the, all, all the, the things here that I do, you can do all of this manually. You don't need, you don't need a workbench or workshop. I assume it could have worked. It would probably have worked much better and easier um, if I would have started with the Forstner bit to reduce the thickness and after only afterwards drilled the, the three holes for the tuners because now you, you, you saw me drilling and struggling because it was wiggling around inside the big hole. Without these holes here for the tuners it might have worked. Might have. Guys, see you next time. Good night.